A short while ago, we broke the news of another mass abduction of secondary school students, this time in Kaduna State. And according to reports, the incident occurred adjacent to the Nigerian Defense Academy. Well, joining us now to look at the known facts around this incident is Dr. Kabiru Adamu, a security expert. Dr. Kabiru Adamu, thank you for joining us. Uh, my pleasure, Dr. Ruben. Good morning to Good. you all. Good morning. morning. Thank you very much. Well, we've had uh, the report of the incident that occurred 3 a.m. Uh, today at the School of Forestry in Kaduna. Uh, what do you know uh, in terms of information about this incident? Uh, our reporter indicated that there are two basic versions. One version says some students were kidnapped. Another says these kidnapped students uh, were female uh, students of that particular school. And even yesterday, we had uh, uh, another incident uh, in, uh, in uh, I think, Delta State. Uh, then, of course, it happens all the time. Uh, well, I would like to have your perspective on this, but we'll take a short break now. When we return, Dr. Kabir Adamo, we'll be back to you. Please stay with us. Welcome back to the morning show here on the Arise News Channel. Our guest is still Dr. Kabir Adamu, a security expert. Dr. Adamu, thank you for staying with us. Well, I was referring to the abduction of teachers and students yesterday in Urome, uh, Edo State, uh, National uh, Institute of Construction Technology. And then today, we woke up to hear that uh, in Kaduna, uh, students of uh, the School of Forestry in Kaduna have also been uh, abducted. Is kidnapping now a self-fulfilling prophecy that we just must live with in this country? Yeah, unfortunately, that's what it looks like, um, Dr. Abati. Uh, about three years ago, I had um, a private uh, security institution. We put out uh, a warning, as it were. Uh, at that time, we had collated the collection of about 200 million US dollars from kidnap for ransom incidences in five years across the country. And we uh, posited that if um, nothing is done to stop uh, the growing industry of kidnap for ransom, that perhaps Nigeria will overtake con a country like Mexico in terms of the risk of abduction and, and kidnapping in the country. And I, unfortunately, that's where we are at the moment. What can we do to stop it? Because it's literally another day, another kidnapping at this point. Um, so there are three basic things. Um, in criminology, you look at first the target. In this instance, um, frankly, almost every Nigerian is a target, but, in, but schools have been specifically targeted. So you look at the target and you harden the target. Um, basically, it means improving the security around the target. Then you look at the incentive from the kidnapping. In other words, the ransom that they are collecting. So how do you uh, either prevent the collection of the ransom or even where the ransom is collected, how do you prevent the use of, of that ransom? And then lastly, the method that is used to uh, conduct the abduction. In this instance, we know they come at night usually, they hurt the students and then they take them into the forest. So how do you prevent or make these methods more difficult? Now, in, in a nutshell, these are the three ways to tackle this, this um, unfortunate circumstance that we found ourselves. All right, because of this, the president issued should on sites, you know, for anybody holding a, an AK-47 rifle. Uh, we've also had no-fly zones around areas like Kazamfara. The other day, we also said 6,000 soldiers moving into that area. Is it that we can use technology to track these kidnappers down in their hideouts and just swoop in on them and do uh, a very dirty, what they call an Italian job on them? Can't we do that? Um, I'm hoping that we've got the capability to do that. Um, now, it, it, your question entails a couple of things. Number one, surveillance. Um, I have listened to an interview you had with an aviation expert in your station that uh, clearly suggested that we don't have the capability for, uh, the, for radar within our airspace. So in other words, that, that's number one challenge. Uh, the second challenge is the ungoverned spaces. Um, within the country. I mean, if we pick this particular abduction in Kaduna, um, it's very likely that the abductors came from the Brunungwari 
forest. The distance between Mandu and Brunungwari is just less than um, 100 kilometers. And for them to have moved that number of students, even though we don't yet know the number of students, it's very likely that it took them into the forest. So the question that has arisen over time is what are we waiting for to dominate this forest? I'm told at the point that the security agencies identified about 60 of such bandit camps across several forests within the northwest and north central. Now, even if from that time, which is up more than a year ago, we had been taking out these camps one after the other, by now we would have eliminated these camps, as it were. So that's the second part of your question. Now, the third part, um, small arms and weapons proliferation within the country. Most of these incidences uh, incidents are actually conducted with the use of small arms and light weapons. Now, we know the government has attempted several things, including closing our borders, um, you know, and then the recent directive by Mr. President for a no-fly um, zone in Zamfara, all in an attempt to reduce this inflow of um, small arms and light weapons. But are these methods effective? Unfortunately, no. Um, the, at the last count, my consultancy did a collation of the small arms and light weapons. We came up with a figure of 6.5 million in the country. And of this 6.5 million, only about 600,000 are in the hands of um, our security agencies. The rest are in the hands of um, non-state actors. So that, for me, will be the number one issue if we're going to deal with all of these threats. How do we mop up the small arms and light weapons that are in the hands of non-state actors? Now, ECOWAS recommended that we set up a commission for mopping up the small arms and light weapons. We're yet to set up that commission. So if we're serious, that's the way to go. I know the Ninth Assembly has attempted to do that, but then we should prioritize that immediately so that we can look at both the international flow as well as the local sources of small arms and light weapons. And then more importantly, the official channels through which these weapons are getting to the hands of um, you know, the bad guys. By that, I mean both through the official borders and then, of course, through the armory of some of the security agencies. So it's a whole lot that we need to ad address. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Ad Adamo, for joining us and for your insights. We thank you very much indeed.